Okay, today we are playing a game on Volskaya Industries. We are in the Gold SR range, and we will be playing Zenyatta the entire way through. And our current team composition is not on screen where I can see it. It's Orisa, Diva, Doomfist, McCree, Anna, and Zenyatta. So, wow, Doomfist in current year? Unbelievable. Absolutely astonishing. Uh, Orisa, Diva, not your ideal combo of tanks, because if you're going to have Orisa as your main tank, usually you'd go Roadhog as the off tank. I mean, not to say you can't do Orisa and Diva, it's fine. It's not just not the uh, optimal setup, basically, or one of the optimal setups. There are several optimal setups, which is a little counterintuitive if you think about it, but I mean, you know, very little about the world is particularly intuitive, to be honest with you. So anyway, let's just start the game instead of talking about whatever the fuck I'm talking about. So... We've got to defend Volskaya first, less arduous than attacking it. We are sitting real far back right now, and then coming up to charge every now and then uh, to see if we can get somebody. I will uh, I will point out that um, being this far back is a little scary on a map like Volskaya, because, and Anna's above us as well. Uh, the thing is, if we're all the way back here, we can't see if anybody um, goes across the side, right? So we're kind of dependent on someone telling us that. But we also have to um, keep an eye out because if somebody comes up behind us right now, like if somebody like Tracer goes around the left hand side, nobody calls it out, nobody notices her or whatever, and she gets around the back of us, we basically just die because we are pretty far away from our teammates, all things considered. So if we get uh, jumped this far back, by someone and we didn't know they were coming at all, we probably die before we can get to our teammates unless like we or they react really quickly. Um, like you do want to be further back as then, you know, you don't want to be up on the front line, honestly, but I will, I do, I will do just want to point out though, I found Sombra, how about that? Do you just want to point out though that if you're going to sit far back, you need to be like really vigilant of the areas around you because if somebody sneaks up on you and you're far away from your teammates, they got a long way to go to get to you, to try and save you. It's particularly important for someone like Zenyatta, who has no method of self-peel, and is um, pretty dependent on teammates actually helping him. Because Zenyatta's escape is transcendence. Right? Like, it's it's a little bit sad for Zenyatta. Um, and I mean, Anna's right next to us, so that helps as well, as long as, you know, Anna's paying attention. You do want to be far back on the hero. I'm not saying you want to go up on like front line as Zenyatta, but it is worth thinking about still. I what what can uh, creep up on what me? What can cause me trouble? Pretty much. So um, we do want to. I don't think it's really usually worth keeping um, Harmony Orb on the tanks as Zenyatta because uh, Zenyatta's not really good at healing up big health pools very quickly unless he's going to use Transcendence, I guess because. Uh, Transcend the Harmony Orb is not exactly a fast method of healing. I prefer to keep it on the um, DPS heroes or the support heroes, just because he's not great at healing up huge amount of hit points very quickly. You're better off leaving that to the um, main healer, and then you can worry about the uh, smaller health pools and let the main healer worry about the big health pools, because they're more equipped to deal with that than you as uh, Senyata are. Now, if your tank is getting fucking murdered, don't be like, eh. Anna's probably got it, right? Like, maybe a bit more pressing concern at that point, but general, just like, kind of neutral stage of the game. I prefer to keep it on the um, softer targets as Zenyatta, just because he's not so good at healing the big health pools. So I went back because, like, that happened over there, and we had, like, no knowledge it ha was happening, pretty much. We just didn't really look over there. And uh, this is the thing with um, Volskaya, is that, like, well, 2CP maps in general, once your team kind of starts splitting up and going into multiple directions like this, it tends to be really easy to actually get in and kill people. Because what really happens is, like, us and, Zen and uh, Doomfist go all the way over there, right? Doomfist, we're never gonna, like, follow Doomfist all the way around. I assume we were looking for, for uh, a flanker. But, um, we go all the way over there. McCree's over here, so suddenly Orisa's over on the left-hand side by herself, right? Like, Anna was over there as well, I guess. But there's, like, two people over there. There's two people on the right-hand side. Doomfist's off doing whatever. So the team's really fractured in a bunch of different locations, and that makes it really easy for the enemy team to just push in, pick one of these little factions of people, and go, kill those first. 
and then after that, it, become, it becomes very slanted very quickly. Because they killed Orissa, and then suddenly, well, now Anna's over there by herself. She's fighting to stay alive, just like, because she's getting dove by other people now, right? Then they're coming over and getting the other groups of people. It's a very scary situation to be in. Um, and I mean, there's not necessarily a lot you do about that as a single individual, right? You can't really stop your teammates from just going off in a bunch of different locations, sadly. As much as we wish we could, we can't uh, control other people, sadly. Pesky thing, free will, isn't it? It gets in the way so frequently. Um, I, for one, welcome our robot overlords. So, um... Not much you can do about that, but it's a really easy way to lose defense in general, but I find the two CP maps are particularly prone to it. Just because the geometry of the map, people like to stand in like one spot over the other, so then you get like the groups of people splitting up and it becomes so so easy for everything to fall apart. I think Hanamura is like the clearest example of this. We just like draw Hanamura like real shitty real quick, right? So we got the gate, got the rock. We got the the point behind there, got the doorway on the right side. I know it's fantastic, isn't it? I should have been a fucking artist. Oh, beautiful. And then we got the balcony up there and the staircases going uh, up. Now, what you'll find is people have like real specific places they like to stand on Hanamura, right? Some people like to stand by the rock. Some people like to stand up here. Some people like to stand back here. Some people like to stand up here. Some people like to stand back there. Some people like to stand back here. Some people like to stand up on the high ground above the point. People like to stand in whole kinds of different locations. But the thing that's scary about that is you'll usually get situations where like a guy's up here, you got the tanks up here, you got DPS back here, and you got like a support back here and maybe a support back here. And you got just a bunch of people fractured in really different locations. It's really f hard for people to get to each other to help them. If you're this far up and your teammates are back here, you gotta go further to get back to safety or vice versa if you're getting dove from the back line. So, and you're just really vulnerable to getting dove, right? This is why like dive comps, like dive comps love that kind of setup, right? Because you go, well, you got a guy up here by himself. So you jump on that guy, kill him like immediately because he's like a mile away from any kind of group of people that can help him. So you just kill him immediately. And then bam, it's a 5v6 immediately. So then you go, all right, well, what else is going on? You got like one guy back here, that guy's next. Then these guys are sprinting back away from the front line to try and save them. And then you got the rest of the people that didn't dive in following in after them. And then this group's getting pinched between them and it can all fall apart so quickly. And I mean, you know, again, single entity in a game, there's not a lot you do about that. But that's like the way things always immediately fall apart, and I find the two CP maps are so prone to that just because of their geometry. Uh, not so much on Paris, because Paris has done a, a magical thing where you only really have one place to stand, right? Like, first checkpoint at least. There's only really one place you can stand on Paris. There's not a whole lot of locations you can be standing that are in any way sensible to be standing in, right? So... Your team is very consolidated on Paris without even really trying, I find. Second checkpoint, it all falls apart. But first checkpoint, Paris, it's all very consolidated. And the attacking team has to do the fucking Death Star trench run right at the start of the round. It's a nightmare. Um, so, you know, not a lot you do about that as a single entity. But um, I think it's interesting to, to talk about. And that's kind of like why I see things fall apart so quickly. As soon as your team starts fracturing into different locations, uh, it's so easy for one group to just get killed. And then it's immediately in the enemy team's favor as soon as they kill one group. Um, yeah, team unity is a big thing. But I mean, what can you do about that as one guy, right? Um, so we're sitting back here. Standard place to stand is Zenyatta. We do have to be careful still because it's really easy to get snuck up on here. People can sneak up on the left side, people can sneak up on the right side. So you do have to like be vigilant still. And it's kind of hard to see. Like you can't really see if anyone goes left. You can't really see if anyone goes right. So you gotta be careful. Um, gotta like re rely on your teammates calling things out or just like vigilantly check the sides pretty much. Especially, yeah, especially if someone's like Zenyatta where his escape is transcendence, right? You gotta worry about these things. Um, so yeah, you know, we're sitting real far back. Uh, I, I because we also have a flanker, I, I like this. This is a good move we make, but, um, especially when you got, like, a flanker as Zenyatta, you really want to try and keep the Harmony Orb on the flanker as much as possible. Like, Doomfist is gonna go off and do his own thing. And, like, yeah, you're not always gonna have line of sight on, on the guy to keep it on him or anything like that, but 
or put it on him to begin with, but Zenyatta synergizes really well with flankers because he's the only healer in the game that can heal people while they're outside of line of sight, which flankers frequently are. So if you got like a flanker on your team, Tracer Genji, um, even Farah, like trying to get the Harmony Orb on that guy before he goes out to do anything is uh, an important thing to try and do. Like Doomfist's out there doing shit right now. You know, you can't always see the guy, but it's something to think about with Zenyatta. He synergizes well with flankers for this reason. So I do like this because we see this guy coming in and we've got Transcendence. It's pretty clear what Weaver's about to do, right? So we jump down, bam, Transcendence immediately. We're right on top of them. We like cut the whole thing off immediately because Sombra also came in and amped. So if we did this like half a second later than we did, we got amped a hundred percent, right? Because we just barely trans before she did that. There's Sombra right now, uncloaked, less than a second after we use trans. So we basically save the point right here because that move right there, that wipes the point if we don't use trans like right then and there. So great job us. And then we fucking iced Sombra as well. So feels good, man. Great job, us. We saved the point right there. Because that Reaper, Death Blossom, that was going to kill everybody. And then if we get amped, it's over. But we saw it coming, came in, head, headed the whole thing off before it was an issue. Great. Um, and, you know, you got to be vigilant for that kind of thing when you're playing uh, Zenyatta as well. Because if there's a Sombra on the enemy team, very high priority for Sombra is hack or amp Zenyatta. Because, I mean... Emp basically kills Zenyatta to begin with, right? Scrapes 150 health off you. Emp might as well read, kill Zenyatta. So, very big deal. And then you can't use Trance either, because you're hacked. So, very big deal. Sombra just killed herself somehow, so good job. Um, very big deal for Zenyatta is to worry about what Sombra's up to. Because if you get Emped, it's all over. It's all over for you. Um, and you know, sometimes that means you end up... Uh, Having to hide out of the way, old school mercy strats, you might have to hide out of the way. If you know they got like a lot of ults coming, you might want to hide out of the way just to make sure you don't get amped when the fight starts. Or you might want to use transcendence a little bit earlier than you normally would, which is kind of what we did right there. It's something to bear in mind. Uh, so Sombra's over here apparently up to no good on the um, Anna. We do jump down to try and heal the Anna. Uh, we do, the thing is if we jump off high ground, it's a, a big time commitment for Zenyatta, right? To get back up onto the high ground. And I get we want to heal Anna and kind of make sure she doesn't die to Sombra. Honestly, Anna's not in critical yet. I don't, I don't feel particularly pressured to jump off the high ground to try and keep her alive when she's that close to being in line of sight anyway. And like, it's a time commitment to get back onto high ground as Zenyatta. So like, if you don't have to jump off, I really don't want to do it pretty much. Because suddenly, look how scary this situation has suddenly become. Right? Like, there's nothing we do about that one. Bridget targets you, and you're playing Zenyatta, you fucking die. Right? Like, you fucking die unless someone helps you. Doesn't matter. As we can see, we're going to win the fight regardless. Don't get punished. Don't have to learn. That's what I always say. But... You know, I didn't feel like we had to jump off the high ground yet. She wasn't in critical, and she was really close to line of sight, so we could have just stayed up there a little bit longer. And if she drops into critical or starts, like, going away from line of sight, maybe, but, like, not in that particular circumstance. This is just such a time investment. Slow hero, no movement abilities. If you dip, go jump off high ground, it's a long time to get back up again. It's a long time. So we've almost got Trance built up again, that's cool, because they're probably getting close to having, uh, oh no, they don't have Reaper anymore. No, no concern. Um, don't have to worry about that. It's like they, we were, they, now, now suddenly we don't have to worry so much about how we use Transcendence, because suddenly they don't really have any ultimates that we need to use Trance to counter. The closest one is probably Bob. So we don't have to be quite so worried about how we use Trance anymore because we don't need to use it to counter big ultimates anymore. So now we can use it just to like try and keep people alive pretty much or like, oh, well, this team fight's starting to go away. I don't really like it going, right? I used to use Transcendence and suddenly the team fight's feeling a lot more secure because we can't die for a little while in there. Um, did I hear? Because I wasn't listening. No, no not really. Um, she didn't go, here I am, you know, the classic. Um, uh, da -da, you know, it's hard to keep an eye out for Sombra, being that she's got a stealth ability and all that. Infinite stealth now as well. Um, but yeah, we don't have to worry quite as much about how we use trance, was the, uh, moral of that line of thought I was going down. 
Um, which is always really nice if, like, the other healer dies, you know? You might want to use Trance uh, a little earlier. I would use Trance right now, just because it looks like I'm going to die. And the fight, you know, it, it, it's not going badly, but I wouldn't describe it as going well either. And we've already established we don't need to counter any big ultimates for Trance, so we can be a little bit more liberal in how we use it, pretty much. So if I'm gonna die, and I'm not 100% sure we're gonna win the fight without me, I'll just pop it, just to make sure. Um, and if they got an ultimate that you need to counter with Trance, like they got Dragon Blade, or Nano Blade even, um, not that that necessarily saves you, but they got Dragon Blade, uh, something like that, Death Blossom, yeah, then you need to think a little bit more carefully about that kind of use. But uh, this kind of situation, we don't have to worry about that anymore. They don't have any of those ultimates. It's also important with Zen, I mean, it's important for everybody, but for somebody like Zen, your ultimate, how you're going to use your ultimate, is largely dictated by the enemy team's comp, right? So you want to keep an eye on the enemy team, just push tab every, every now and then. Like, make sure everything's still in order over there. And, um, you know... It's good to do as every hero, just keep a track of, like, the enemy um, team comp and what's going on, what you need to worry about, what your uh, priorities are. But for Zenyatta, so much of how you use your ultimate is determined by the enemy team. It's very important to keep an eye on. So there's Sombra, she didn't quite manage to hack us. Um, D.Va's currently purple. Um, I was thinking about using this already, because I was... Mostly I was like, I might have used it then, but then I saw D.Va was purple, so I decided, nah, I, I probably wouldn't now. But now there's a couple people drop. oh, did Anna get hooked? Is that what we did right there? Yeah, Anna got hooked, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. 100%, keep Anna alive. Um, if Anna dies, that's real bad for us, so yeah, 100%. And this is looking to be the last fight, so hey, smoke him if you got him, right? And hey, look at that. We, you know, we've we've basically won the fight. We're we got we gotta go through the the procedure, but we, we win the fight. You can see there's not a lot of time left on this video, so we either uh, crush them or uh, we get crushed. Uh, there's actually not four minutes left on the, uh, the video, so that might uh, infer your vote right here. But uh, yeah, maybe the video cuts off like two minutes early. You never know, right? It, was, it wouldn't be the first time we've watched a video that cut off like two minutes before the end. So, uh, we've got a Reinhardt. I don't really worry about the team comp after the first part of the game, to be honest with you. Uh, largely the same. Uh, well, not really. Um, I, I basically looked at it, I was like, Shield Tank, Doomfist, eh, Anna Zen, same deal. No, it's it's kind of changed a fair bit. Both the tanks changed, so. That's, that's all I worry about. As someone that played a tank for like 12 seasons, that's, that's what I worry about. To me, like, every team composition is, like, largely dictated by what the two tanks are. They got a dive comp? Yeah, that's just because they got Anna, or, uh, Anna. They got D.Va, Winston? That's ah, dive comp. Well, but the others are, um, Soldier, McCree, Anna, Zant. Nah, 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 nah. We got two dive tanks, we got dive comp. It's just we got two long range hit scan DPS with the, with the dive comp. It's a little weird, I know, but we got dive comp, man. Got a got an uh, Arisa Roadhog. We got a bunker comp, but the rest of our teammates are uh, Genji, uh, Tracer, Lucio. No, 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 no. We got the bunker comp still. It's only one person in the bunker. No, 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 no. We got a bunker comp. Um, so they've immediately lost Reinhardt. Then Ash dies immediately afterwards as well. Things went real bad for them. Um, Could have put the. Oh, no, we got it on. Doomfist, who's in a similar spot right there, though. Um, I was gonna say, we could have put it on Junkrat sooner, but to be honest with you, we, we are also justified in not moving into Junkrat right now anyway, because Doomfist looks like he's in a similar position to Junkrat. And Junkrat was in line of sight to Anna, but he line of sighted himself behind the corner. So, that's more Junkrat's um, fault than anybody else's. Don't do this. Don't do this if you're playing Sombra, right? Because, like... We killed her once because we turned around and she was just like standing perfectly still behind us. We just volleyed her right in the face, right? She's doing it again, right? She's just standing perfectly still behind us. So like, we aim that a little bit better. She just dies again because she's standing perfectly still behind us. Don't do that. Don't stand perfectly still. Um, bob, and bob back and forth a little bit at least. Just makes you a little bit harder to kill. Because if anybody like precision based hero comes around a corner and they see you perfectly standing still, they're like fucking free kill right here. Um, Genji comes around the corner, finds you sitting perfectly still, ting 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 ting, dead. Um, you know, Ash, Widow, 
Hanzo, even McCree. They come around the corner, they find you perfectly still as a free headshot. You just bob back and forth a little bit. Um, you know, you can take it too far and be fidgeting around so much that your aim is just goes to shit, but bob back and forth a little bit. Don't stand perfectly still. Not an issue we've really had that I've observed, but uh, the Sombra, I'm just like, we've just twice now we've turned around and like almost killed her because she's just standing still behind us. Uh, right there, we just fucking straight up killed her. Like, get, get smoked, kid. So we've almost got Trance built up. Uh, they lost that fight very handedly, so they probably aren't getting very close to having some ultimates, and a couple of people switched, I think. Um, oh, did we just barely not build that up in time to use that? Ah, uh, damn. Uh, life's hard, you know? I'm just, I'm just sad, to be honest with you. We don't have ours on Anna. Who's on it? It's on uh, Doomfist right now. I would have put it on Anna sooner than that, just because um, Anna's running forward, pretty much. And uh, Anna shouldn't be doing that. Like, don't get me wrong, this is Anna's mistake to be positioning so aggressively when her tank is still behind her right now. Like, that's Anna's mistake, don't get me wrong. But it looks like Anna's speeding towards making a mistake, so I'll put the Harmony Orb on her right now, um, just to try and, like, keep her alive when she does make this mistake. But, uh, like, don't get me wrong, that's that's her mistake, but you want to try and, like, correct people's mistakes if it is feasibly possible for you to do so. So we use Trance right there. It's a little sketchy, but um, we would like to win on this push. So I'm fine with using it, especially after Anna died. Just using it to try and keep them alive and just try and make sure we win the fight, pretty much. Because, Lord knows, we don't have much staying power now that Anna's dead. We gotta try and, like, win fast on this push if this push is gonna win, right? So I'm fine with using trans there. Uh, even though it looked a little sketchy to begin with. And hey, look at that, we win the game. I Fantastic. It wasn't very close, was it really, to be honest with you. What we got going on here? I'll let myself in. I keep seeing this, I might watch it just because I don't know what the fuck it's talking about, pretty much. Because I'm like, I'll let myself in, tactics of physical pen testers? I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Uh, when ma what happens when math goes wrong? I've seen that show up a couple times now as well. Um, I like GDQ. I like Northern Lion. Scammer rages when I delete his files. Okay. Scammer revolts. That sounds like a good channel. I might check that one out. I like Dungeons and Dragons. Mass battle cruisers during. Uh, I mean, I've watched StarCraft too, so I know where that's coming from. So yeah, hey, great job. I might like. I'm just. I'm just curious, like, what this fucking means. To be honest with you. Um. Because it's like, I immediately think like, oh, it's something about, like, burglary. Especially since I w it showed up not long after I watched something along those lines about, like, uh, the mindset of a burglar. But then it's like, physical pen testers. I don't know what that means. Um, anyway, I'm also stupid, though. So it might be obvious, and I'm, I'm just stupid. So, um, pretty good Zenyatta game, to be honest with you. It's a game we won that wasn't um, particularly close, but... Uh, Pretty good Zenyatta game, um, you know. The email specifically said um, concerned about positioning, but I didn't see much issue with positioning, honestly. Um, you know, I talked about it at length right at the start, but not necessarily because we were doing something wrong, just something to bear in mind when you're positioning um, carefully. And like, pretty good Zenyatta game overall. Uh, not a whole lot to complain about. Um, I felt we used Transcendence really well, um, which is a really big deal um, for Zenyatta. I didn't notice anything particularly egregious with how we were using our orbs, but I might have also just not noticed, to be fair, at the same time. But um, nothing stood out to me like how we were, we were using our orbs wrong. I, mean, I talked about Harmony Orb kind of at length, but just as something to bear in mind still. Um, yeah, really good Zenyatta game overall. Um, way better than the average gold Zenyatta, I would say. Um, Way better than your average gold Zenyatta, who are um, extremely suicidal and uh, extremely suicidal. You don't really need to go any further than that when you're talking about um, bad Zenyattas, really, do you, to be honest with you? So, uh, thank you very much for watching if you did. If you have any, let me just check the email real quick. Just like, make sure I don't think there was a question in there. But I feel like I'm forgetting something. So, it's uh, best to check ahead of time. Rather than realize I made the mistake later. Da, 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 da. Also, do not speak in this game because I feel calling discords in such low elos is more bother than more bothersome than useful. Yeah, I, 
I personally hate when people do that anyway. I think it's so stupid because you can just see what the purple balloon is attached to. I, I don't like that anyway because um, I think people should just use their eyes. But that's me. Um, I agree. The people in low SR are not going to capitalize on it, so don't worry about it. Uh, da -da. Nope, no questions. All right, so thank you very much for watching if you did. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to answer. If you haven't already, you can join our Discord and ask questions more directly and have a conversation about them or just shitpost with us. Start streaming on Twitch Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, 7 p.m. EST till 10 or 11 EST, depending on how things go. Uh, there's a link to the channel in the, in the uh, description. And uh, if you managed to make it all the way through the video and somehow still enjoyed it, please like the video and subscribe for more content of middling quality in the future. And I hope you found the video helpful.